recommend this song. We ask that you join us. Turn to page 203 in your hymn book, Sanctuary. And mean these words as you minister through this song. We ask that you continue to bless this, this holy house. Bless it in a manner that, that we cannot even see. That we may go out and worship us from this place, showing the world how God wants us to live and be. God, we ask that you continue to bless this man, this man that you put in this place. Continue to build him and mold him, prune him, encourage him, as you do for each and every one of us. Now, God, we ask that you open up your word to us today, that we may be able to understand it clearly and be able to apply it accurately. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God's internal reign. And just from by the unit, it tells us that God is trying to reign something on the internal inside of us. Yeah. You know, yeah. remember when Israel left Egypt, they still had a lot of stuff from Egypt inside of them that they had to try to discord. But they had struggles with that because even when they got to the place they needed to get and God asked them to go out, they refused to go because something that was still inside of them smell like Egypt. <laughs> yeah. So they acted like Egypt. All and right. so our lesson today is dealing with the eternal part that, that God wants to reign inside of us. And it begins today in chapter 14 of Romans. In chapter 14 of Romans, um, Paul is addressing the Roman church. And he's also within that church, you have to understand the dynamics 
at the time, you had Christians, or well, you had Jews who had converted, converted over to Christianity, and you had Gentiles who were converted over to Christianity. And these two dynamic groups was kind of, they were both were kind of misfits <laughs> in their own right. They both was kind of misfit because the Jews typically did not believe, you know, in Christianity, but these group, these Jews moved over and believed in Christianity, believed in Jesus Christ, the gospel. And then you had the, 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 the Gentiles who believed in pagan gods. And so they, they, they disregarded them and moved over to Christianity. So these, both of these two misfit groups now is under this umbrella of being Christ-like. And Paul had already talked to them one time before about how to conduct, conduct and, and deport themselves. But you have to understand there was something still in the Jewish Christians, newly converted Christians, that they were still dealing with. They were still dealing with, you know, what was clean and unclean. They were still dealing with, you know, what days that they need to observe. And, and, and when Christ came, Christ came and he made it clear that whatever he said was clean, was clean. But, the, but the, the Gentiles, they didn't know of this, you know, religious sect that the Jewish people had come from. So they, 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 they didn't know anything differently. So they, they, they only acted one way. They didn't have these clean and unclean things that they ate. And so it caused controversy amongst the church. Just like today. If you really want the people of God to go south, <laughs> you stand divided on an issue. And the church will go south real quickly. It's just the way it is. I mean, you like, we were, if you just, let's just take something simple. What if we got in, a, in, a, in an argument about, do we wear purple dresses or blue dresses? <laughs> you can, we, we have those arguments just on one Sunday. <laughs> but. <then, laughs> Now, can you imagine something that's more profound? Yeah. And this is what they were dealing with. They were dealing with, should we eat meat or should we not eat meat? Is it clean? Is it not clean? And this was a huge issue. Yeah. We, 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 we sit on the post side of this and say, so like, that's crazy. But at the time, it was something that they really struggled with. Because the Jews at the time that was the, 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 the converted Jews to Christian from, they, they, they believed that from the Mosaic law that you know, there were certain things very, that was clean and one uh, was unclean. Yeah. And they right. were still in that mindset. And they couldn't get out of that mindset even though God, Christ came and said everything was clean, they were still working in their own fashion. Yeah. To a point that it caused a huge problem and we'll see that here in our scriptures. So let's, let's jump into scripture here. It says, but why does thou judge thou brother, or why does thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He says, why are you judging one another? And you know, Paul is talking to him. Why are you judging one another? He says, we all sit at the judgment seat of Christ. Christ is the only one who has the right to judge. And on that final day, he would judge based on our accounts here on earth. You can't judge me for, you, you ain't God to judge me. But yet they was judging one another based on their dietary desires. And so he said, why, why, why would you judge your brother? Because Christ's only one has the right to judge. And brothers and sisters, we got to be careful of that. Because sometimes someone walked through the church and we judge them because they don't have a tie on. They wore the different kind of shoes today. They don't look like church shoes. And we judge them. And we, I mean, minor things. I mean, think about it. We, we, we get beset over the minor, the minor things that you can possibly think of. But what, but what, what Paul was saying, do you, do you don't have a right to judge. And then he says, for it is written, as I live, said it the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. He said, like it or not, every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess. When your knee bow, that's an external expression of what, who God is. When that tongue confess, that's the internal revelation of what, who God really is. 
He said, you gonna, you gonna, you, it, you're going to do it physically and internally. <laughs> you're going to bow down and, and let God, and God, and God, you would know that who God is. And so he says, every, every knee should bow. Every tongue will confess that he is God. And so while you're getting so beset on what is and what is not, yeah. when you, while you, you know, maximizing the minor things, yeah. God is saying, I'm still God. You're getting all upset about stuff, and I'm still God, and I, I'm going to be the, the ultimate umpire on this. I'm going to make the final call on this. And he said, what you need to do, what, Christ, what, what, what Paul tried to impress upon them was that the love of Christ, when, God, when Jesus died on the Christ, it fulfilled the law. It fulfilled the law, and, and this Christian love should take precedence over, over anything that we have. Any of your idiosyncrasies, any of your, your, your needs or wants or your biases or, or whatever you might have, he said, the love of God should trump all of that. Yeah. It should be above all of that. And sometimes we get beside ourselves thinking that our job, because I am this and you're that, I'm more important than you. Right. And God is saying, that doesn't even matter. <laughs> What matter is the love that you show for one another. Okay, I might be, you know, I might be the one who's taking out the trash for, for my vocation. And you may be the one who's sitting, you know, in another seat of VP or president. But that doesn't make you any better than me. Amen. What makes you us equal is this love that, that Christ shared for us. And what we should be showing to each other, regardless of our vocation, experience, money in the bank account, is the love of Christ. Amen. That's the only thing that matters. And so he said, it is written, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Then verse 12, he says, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. So what you do, it is being calculated. What you do will be brought up again. Yeah. What you have not done is written down. <laughs> what you have done has been written. Yeah. And God is taking the account of it. Yeah. And so how you, how you mistreat someone because of your differences, your idiosyncrasies, or, your, or, or whatever, whatever things that you might have, and you treated someone differently, he said, there's a, there's a record of this. Yeah. All right. And what you've done for Christ is recorded. What you have not done for Christ has been recorded. How you treated your brother yeah. is recorded. And so God is making it here. He, Paul is, is laying out very clearly. There's an account for all that you're doing. Because you're, you're saying that um, you're boasting as, as Christians because um, you, have a, you have a sense of this liberty that Christ has given you. That you understand that what God said was good. It is good. And you have liberty and understanding that everything is good. But because you sit in a place of growth and maturity as a Christian, you cannot, you cannot, you know, defile somebody else because they're not where you are. And we do that <laughs> because somebody don't have the same level of understanding within what Christ has done for us. We feel that we're better than them and we treat them poorly because they're not on our same level. And he says, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. And so I like what Paul did here. Paul was very, you know, he was very eloquent in his, in his prescription for them, if you will. He didn't, he didn't shun one side or the other. He didn't shut the other, one side or the other down. He, he just basically gave them some rules and some reasons. Yeah. Oftentimes in life what we lack is, rules and simple reason. <laughs> we, we don't want to reason with nobody, so therefore we're unreasonable. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we don't get along with folks because we're so unreasonable and we so yeah. set in our rules and, and how we do things that we can't even hear what anybody else has to say. <laughs> unreasonable. And so he says here, let's not do that anymore. He said, let's, 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 let's find another way of, of resolving this problem. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I say to you, some of you, if you're still having the same problem with the person that you're having the same problem with, and it's been many years, 
here's a bit of advice. If you're going to the doctor and you're still not getting well, it's probably because you're not following the prescription. <laughs> you're probably not taking and following the directions of the physician. And so therefore, you're still ill. <laughs> And so this is what Paul is saying. If you still got these bad relationships with one another, yes. here is my prescription. Follow my prescription, yes. and this will make things get a little better for you. So Paul provides a prescription for him, and he says, but just this, matter, this, this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Right. A stumbling block. Now, yes. Here's what we do. Here's what Paul was meaning by this. He uh -huh. simply meant that some things as a mature Christian, understanding my Christian liberty, there are some things that I can do and I'm okay with it yes. because I understand what Christ has done. Yes. But yet there's maybe someone not as strong in Christ, yes. sees right. what I'm doing, right. yeah. and he stumbles because yeah. he's not sure. And basically he was saying that you, although you're comfortable with it and you know there's another Christian weak and, and, and not quite there, you might not ought to do that. <laughs> that thing that you're doing, yeah. you might not ought to do. I, one that we had um, during the college days. Yeah. During the college day, it was dancing because everything was so, you know, you, you studying all the time and you, 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 you want to have an outlet and that wasn't re much really to do. And so they had these campus parties. And those of us who was trying to follow the faith, we struggled with dancing. Should we dance? Should we not? <laughs> and we struggled with that. Yeah. And Christ made it very clear. If you got a brother that's, that, that sees that as an offense, yeah. you might not want to dance in front of that brother. <laughs> because it could be a stumbling block for him. Because he meant like, well, this Christian thing is not what I really want to do. And there's other things that you can probably identify in your life that somebody was doing that you kind of, I don't know if we should do that. But if the scripture says, mm -hmm. if the scripture says that it's okay, if the scripture says that it was good, it's okay to do, it's okay to do. But everybody's not at the same level to do it. Amen. And we have to be mindful of that because here's one thing I know. Somebody's always watching you. <laughs> Somebody's always got their eyes on you. And you can't be so foolish to think like, oh, I mean, I'm just going to do this, and it's going to be okay. No, not, not necessarily the case. And so God is saying we can't be a stumbling block or an occasion for your brothers to fall. And oftentimes we like, hey, I can do this. I mean, God said it was good. I can do it. But you, you're hurting somebody along the way. And so we need to be a good example and be mindful all the time where we are and what we're doing. Not in a way of hiding and, and trying to do something dubious but when we don't think nobody is looking. It's just a matter of how we walk it because there's some young Christian trying to get where we are. And they're just not strong yet. And then it says here, um, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus Christ that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that, that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yeah. And so Paul would simply say, I, I, I'm persuaded. <laughs> God, I, I'm, I'm persuaded what Jesus done, everything is clean. Everything is clean. And he says that he could partake of it. But he said that, but there's some out there that esteem that it, it, is, it is unclean. And, but to him it's unclean. Now, here's, the, tr here, here, here's the, the slippery slope on this one. Now, sometimes, you know, because we have this Christian liberty and we know that God has made some things okay, we take it a little bit further and go out of bound, meaning that we start doing things that is not okay, and we think that Christian, Christian liberty, you know, give us that freedom. It does, but it still makes it wrong in the sight of God. Yeah. It's still wrong. Although you have this liberty and God give us the free will to do it, but if it doesn't line up with Scripture and doesn't line up with the word of God, it is wrong. But then it says here, then there are some that what we're doing that may be done that we know is clean and somebody sees it as unclean, 
although they may feel that it's unclean, but it's clean, to them, it is unclean. Because their conviction caused it to be unclean. Does that make sense to everybody? My conviction to something that God says is clean, but my conviction says it's unclean, that thing is unclean to me. That thing is unclean to me because I have put myself in that. Now, there's still some growth you have to do because you got to get to the place where God says it is clean. Now, that's your, I, I want to say it's immaturity, but it's just, it's just your lack of growth. It's your lack of growth. There was many things that my mom and dad told me I was going to go to hell for. <laughs> I've come to some no sin. That ain't, ain't true. I, mean, I, mean, I had to jam them up one time. Mom, dad, why you jam me that? Man. I'm walking around like I'm a poindexter because I'm mommy dad. That jammed me up. They, 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 yeah. But this is what Paul was saying. They had got in, you know, the, 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 the Pharisees had gotten into some of the Jewish heads that they couldn't get beyond that God made everything clean. And so I say to you, be careful what you teach your children. Be careful what you teach your grandchildren because sometimes they cannot get out of that path of what you have instilled for them. Yes. And we think, we, we pray that with God's growth, that those things that, that do shackle them, that God says is clean, that they will be break from, broken from those yokes and chains that, that we may have put on them because we didn't want them to do a certain thing and yes. so we scared them out of fear with religion. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's just my experience. <laughs> just, that was just my experience. And he says, but if, if, if thy brother be grieved with thou meat, with thou meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thou meat. He said, basically, he, he, he's saying, sometimes we can destroy one another yeah. by something that, that God has said that was clean, and we, 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 we destroy the other person because they're not where we are. We break their spirit. We break their desire. We break their hope to be a better Christian because we like, you should do better. You should know better. You know, and we, we, we beat them, you know, just senselessly with our words and with our, you know, actions against them. It says you, you, you destroy in that way. And by the other, by the other token, it's somebody who's not as strong or, or grown in their Christianity and see somebody doing something. You can't use your mouth against them either. You can't be saying you know better. You should know better. You're supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> like, I mean, the, like Brother the Cloth get all the time, you're supposed to be a preacher. <laughs> you know, Y'all beat us up with that. Y'all beat us up pretty good with that. You're supposed to be a preacher. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm going to pause right there. So I don't <laughs> I had, I had a quick comeback, but I said, I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> so, you supposed to be okay. Right. <laughs> so, but he said, you destroyed not him with our, with our meat. He said, you don't destroy him about what he's doing or not doing and what his understanding or his, his lack of understanding. You don't destroy a person because of that. Because we, 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 we at some point, we was all at the starting line. We were all at the starting line. Just because you're about to hit the finish line, don't, don't get bad at those because the gun ain't going off on them yet. No. They're still waiting. Yeah, and we got to be patient with them as God has been patient with us. Our love has been patient with us. But, but, but what we do as, as Christians, when we get to a place, we begin to do two things. We rate and berate people. We rate them and we, and, be, we, and we berate them. And that's, that's not what God's saying. He said, the love of God, is, he came for all of us. Regardless your strength or your weaknesses, where you are, if you eat flesh or, you eat, or you're a vegetarian. He said, it doesn't matter. The love of Christ is the main thing. So lose your titles, lose your, your provider or whatever you may have to think you better than somebody else. At the, at, at the grassroots level, Christ died for us all. He dies for us all, and we should act that way just because he may walk in with, you know, smelling like alcohol and his jeans are torn. We shouldn't treat them any differently. And how would we treat somebody if they walked in here and didn't look like us? 
How would we treat them? Will we ask the deacon, hey, take them out <laughs> to the back? How will we act? Or will we bring them up front? Or we welcome the brother or the sister? That's the love that God wants to show. That's what Christ died so we can have this. And so he says, for whom Christ died. That's what Christ died for. He died for us to be united back to God and be united with one another in the same common goal that we want every man to be saved. That we want everyone to experience this love of God. We want everyone to make it to heaven. That's how we act. That's how we should be acting. Now, I say to some of you, I mean, we all have some. I say, and that's including me. We have some that we haven't connected with. Months, years. You know, we just haven't connected with. My daughter asked me, she said, but, but Dad, and we were having this kind of conversation. She said, but Dad, I try. And she said, and she said what should I do about it? I said, keep trying. Keep trying. I know it gets, you know, because you know, like, the, like the me and me, I'm like, man, I'm done with that, man. <laughs> I'm done with him. But, but Christ said, no, nah, come back to yourself, you know, get out of yourself. I came to get you when you was far off. So go out and get them, even though they far off. And so that's what Christ died for. And we forget that. Sometimes we think about Christ died for me to have that real big house. <laughs> Christ died for me to have, but yeah, 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 you, you, you get that. That's a byproduct of what you really get. Because this stuff can't go to heaven with you, but it can't. You can't take it. It won't go. The Egyptian tried that, but it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't, yeah, it, it just didn't work out for him. But let not then your good be evil spoken of. Don't let it be even spoken of because, you know, you... You know, I heard pastors, he's taught us a long time that you, 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 you so, you're so earth, uh, heavenly bound that you know earthly good. Yeah. That you're so holy and roly that you ain't good for nobody here on earth because you so, you know, can't have a good conversation with you because you keep throwing scripture at me. I just, I mean, that's okay, but I, I do like to have some general conversation at time, you know? Yeah, but you said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. And so the good thing that, that Christ has done and the things that you're doing, don't let it be even spoken of. It says, for the kingdom of God is not, is not meat and drink, for the righteousness and the peace and the joy in, in the Holy Ghost. He said, that's what it is. It's not about what we eat or don't eat. It's not yeah, about what's yeah. clean and you feel is unclean. Yeah. He said, I need you to change your, what your, I need you to have this kind of both mindset. That's what he was telling them. And I say that to us today. We got to get out of ourselves so God can put more of himself in us, and then we can actually grow. We have to understand, you know, this, this righteousness of God. We have to understand this peace of God and the Holy Spirit, how it, it, it intertwines uh, with us daily and, and causes us to grow. And that infectious growth that we have, it grows out on others. It touches others, and their mind is changed. And he, he's talking about this internal reign. He said, I want to get some control over you internally, how you think. I want, I, want, I want to have a good handle on that so you can understand that when you see somebody acting and looking differently from you, All right. God loved them too. Yeah. Yeah. He loved them too. Amen. Just because they're out there fussing and cussing, you know what? Christ died for them too. Yeah. Now, now, I ain't going to tell you no story. It's a little hard for me at times. Because some, some people on that other political side, <laughs> do I really got to like them too? Yeah, but I do. I mean, he died for them too. And I have to get out of myself. This is the growth he want me to have, or us to have, yeah. that we can look at the TV and not want to throw rocks at the television. <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, is it just me get that upset? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I get, I get, I get that upset. But he's working on me, though. <laughs> he's working on me. I mean, I, I really get that upset, but this is, this is internal growth that God wants to have because, you know, yeah. if I saw them in need, I don't want to be able to determine because you said that I did that. I don't want to render aid to them. Yeah. I don't want to have to question if I should render aid to them because the bigger thing is that they're gods. Mm -hmm. right. They're children of Christ. Regardless of the political affiliation, what may, they may spew out of their mouth at times, they're still gods. 
And even though they may not give me the same, they may, they, they may not respond to me in kind, I still got to respond to them that way. Because some of us in our heads like, I ain't going to help that joker because that joker will not help me. But that's not what God says to us. That's not what he says to us. And I know this is internal growth, right? Because if we, we feel that way about some people, like, uh-uh, not him. God, anybody but him. But God said, yeah, him too. You got to go help him too. So he said, the righteousness, the peace, the joy in the Holy Spirit, this is what Christ died for. This is the kingdom of God. This is the meat that God is speaking about, not just the, the, the sustenance that we're talking about. For he that is in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Yes. So these things are acceptable, and, and, and most men do approve of these things. And then he says in verse 19, to speed this up a little bit, uh, let us therefore follow after things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Yeah. He said, let's, let's focus on these things that, that causes us to build up one another. Let's focus on these things uh, that, that cause each other to be feeling good about who they are and what God can do for them and with them. Speak life into them. Build them up. Even though, hey, hey you messed that up, you know, ten times. But the eleventh time, you're going to get it, though. Yeah. You, you'll get it the eleventh time. It's not the eleventh, it's going to be the twelfth. It's not the twelfth, you're going to get it the thirteenth. Yeah. And, and continue to increase and encourage to edify people. I mean, I don't know about you, but it, it feels good to me when somebody says something good and builds me up. I may know that, like, man, I, I might not get this, but if they just speak it to me, it might be that one time that it may, it may just happen. Yeah. And that's strength yeah. to grow from. And, yeah. and it says, therefore, let us, therefore, allow after the things which make us a peace and the things where it is edified. And verse 20 says, for meat destroy not the work of God. Mm. Meat destroys not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Yeah. He says that if, if, if you know, we, we have to be careful because, you know, I, I saw some things on, I think it was YouTube or something. And, you know, I, I really turned my nose up against it because I, I saw this lady and she was eating, she was eating a turtle. Okay, not what I would do, <laughs> but, but you know, but I turned my nose up. I, I, I felt offended in, a, in some kind of way. I did, I did. But you know, but God said it, it, it is not the meat, what they eat, their dietary need, that doesn't matter. It's not about that meat. The meat we're talking about here is, is, is the scripture. The word of God, that's the meat. And then it's verse 21, it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything thereby thou brother stumbleth or is offended or, in, or is made weak. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that, that commandeth not himself in that thing which, is, which he allows. Yeah. And he that doubteth is damned, if eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So simply, simply what God is saying here, if you, if you, if you strongly feel that you're doing something that you feel is sinful, but you feel that you need to do it because others are doing it, He's saying that, you, you, that you're sinning. Yeah. So in this case, he's saying that if you only eat meat because the other ones are eating and you really don't feel it in your heart and your spirit to eat meat, you're sinning. Because you feel forced and it's not of faith that you're eating it. You're eating it because others are doing it or you're being coerced or you feel like you're forced to do it. And so simply God said, you, you can't put yourself in that situation. You got to have your conviction. And what convicts you and what convicts me may be different. 
we have our own personal relationship with God. Right. We have our own personal relationship. So what convicts me may not convict you. And we got to be careful not to judge one another on our own personal conviction. And if it lines up with God, even though you may not like it, it, it still lines up with God. And so what we need to do is get out of ourselves in regards to seeing things differently and seeing people do things differently. The question we need to ask is, do I have the love of God for them? Not so much what they're doing and how they're doing. And now, if it doesn't align up with scripture, what they're doing, it is wrong. And we do hold our brothers and sisters accountable to some regard. But yet, still, uh, just because you don't do that, in this case, eat turtles, <laughs> you can't frown upon somebody else who do. <laughs> you, know? you can't think they bad because they do. That's all I have for today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, and, and I pray that you grow in regards to making sure that um, <laughs> that we, in our differences with people, that we learn to still show the love of Christ regardless of what, Amen. who they are and where they come from. And remember that Christ died for us all. And we got to have this eternal growth in order to get to that place. Amen. 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 Amen.